G'day all. On the bench today, I'm doing a bit of uh, resto work on a Craig L231 AM SSB radio from back in the day, from 1977 actually. Uh, these radios were made in Japan. And what I thought was a Cybernet board is not actually a Cybernet board. Well, if it is, it's news to me. Because when I opened up the, uh, took the covers off the radio, straight away I saw this, uh, which usually the PCB doesn't look like a Cybernet to me. Um, yeah, there's a few things in here that are telling me that it's not a Cybernet board. We'll go through those shortly. So what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just replacing uh, the electrolytic capacitors, the old ones. Um, you know, like there's a lot of people say you don't need to replace them. Um, if the radio is working, um, it'll be fine and everything like that. Well, when these radios were designed in the mid 1970s, um, I doubt very much that uh, the, in, the uh, engineers that uh, designed them uh, had any idea that in 2022, the radios would still be used. Um, so there's a lot of components in radios that do fail because it's like everything else. Uh, they're designed to. Nothing lasts forever, especially in electronics. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just going through, um, I use one of these uh, desoldering stations that are really good to get them off eBay for about 300 bucks or 250. I think it's about 250. I've had this one for quite a while now. Uh, they work really well. I'll just turn it on quickly so you can have a look at it. Uh, really easy to use. So that's the uh, soldering part. And this is the uh, desoldering part of the uh, desoldering station. And yeah, they work really well. I'll turn it off because it's a bit noisy. Um, yeah, so if you're in electronics, you don't want to use the old hand squeezy desolderer. Uh, get one of those. Uh, makes life so much easier. Really easy to use as well. Okay, so when I uh, get a radio, you know, first of all, I test it and everything like that. Now, this one has been low down on power. Um, I was getting modulation out of it, but no power. So that usually can be one or two things. Usually, um, if you've done a, a transistor um, or the audio chip, or actually three things, or it's a cap. So usually the, you can trace it back. You've got a multimeter. Um, usually you can track it fairly easily uh, to see if it is uh, a transistor. But uh, usually on these old radios, and you know, 40 odd years ago, the caps weren't made to last 40 odd years. Um, they, um, and here's the uh, underside of the board as such. I'll just turn this over. <clears throat> Heavy little bugger. I'll show you why you should consider changing the caps. And I hadn't picked this. I looked at the caps visually and thought, yep, yep, they, they look fine. I uh, gave them the old wiggle test. I've replaced a couple already. What I usually do with the radios, uh, when I recap a radio, I'll usually replace half. And then I'll go and test the radio to see if I've uh, solved the problem. And if not, um, I'll go and change the other half. There's plenty of um, stuff on uh, YouTube, which caps to change, not to change. Um, tannin caps and uh, bits and pieces like that also need to be changed. Just don't even ever think that it's all about the electrolytic. But having said that, I thought, well, I'll start over here where a lot of the heat is generated. And have a look at this. This is the end result of this cap here failing. Now, I'll just zoom that in. Look at that. Oh, sorry about that. That post, which is the positive post on the cap, if I can get it better, is completely corroded. Incredible. Look at that. Completely corroded away. So that's probably one of the main reasons the radio wasn't working because of this cap. So when people say, oh, you know, you don't have to do, well, yeah, you do have to. Um, you can get away with a lot of components, but um, I've seen too many of these fail 
Um, and for some unknown reason, it's always on these types of radios, it's always the 2200 cap that fails. I don't know what it is, but this one's just, this is one's just corrosion. And uh, it's probably been sitting around for, I don't know how many years. Look at the rest of the radio. It's like shiny as, it's like bloody brand new inside. So I would assume under this RF can, um, got the chipset and um, I don't see a VCO block here or anything like that. So this leads me to believe that um, it's got a, uh, a chip. I'm not too sure which one is such. Um, I did try to do a bit of research. I couldn't find it. Um, I can dr drill down more on, uh, the, you know, on the web and find out exactly what it is. But that tells me that it's probably sitting under there. I can't see any other chips or anything like that. Interesting that a lot of the um, copper traces are on this side of the board and uh, as well. But yeah, have a look at that. So that is trouble with a capital T. Now, one thing you will notice, there is a, let's see what I, you can use here. Usually I have my little plastic pointers. Let me see if I can get one out quickly. No, I can't. But you can see here, always um, when you're doing this type of work, never use a screwdriver or anything like that. It's just a bad habit to get into. Um, you never know, You might one day you might short something out. You can go to J-Car or Ultronics and get these little plastic uh, toothpicks, uh, screwdriver pieces and everything like that. Now let's have a look down in here. Where is it? We'll go back here. It's a bit hard when you look through the camera. And uh, there is, look, there's a track running right underneath all that muck. So I'll have to uh, gently wash clean that uh got some uh P pcb spray cleaner hopefully that that track's not damaged if not i'll have to put a i'll have to repair it put a bridging wire um from a to b and you're going to be really careful with these tracks yeah it doesn't take much to really do some damage so yeah that's another thing to watch out for if that track hopefully it's not usually they have a like a varnish on it just give it a quick quick rub uh, I might be able to um what have I got here yeah okay so here we've got some circuit board cleaner what I might do right now is give it a bit of a bit of a spray uh, where are we sorry about that and um, let's just see I should let it soak in but Mm. I'll let it soak in a bit. Then I'll use a uh, cotton bud as such to uh, clean it up. Sorry about that. It's probably a bit better like that. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's done any damage, but you never know. Yeah, it looks, looks okay, um, hopefully. But if it hasn't, yeah, I'm going to have to... Uh, Plan B, I'll have to get the cotton buds out. Anyway, okay, so there you have it. That's why you need to replace electrolytic capacitors because they're all, they, all they're all sitting up there like that, sitting on the board like they usually are like that. Um, you know, that's what they look like. Um, all the troubles usually underneath. Every now and again, you can see them. They're usually uh, bulb there. Um, but, yeah all the trouble is usually happening underneath where you can't see it. A lot of the time you may see um, electrolyte fluid like sort of running down the tracks, uh, causing corrosion. Um, so there's a visual straight away, but this radio, it didn't show any of that. And I was just, I just thought, I'm just gonna change uh, some of these main caps out, um, especially where there's a lot of heat generated from the, um, if it's around any transformers or uh, anything like that, um, yeah, that's uh, usually the caps can usually uh, fail because of all the heat being generated. So this one doesn't look too bad, just scraping it away still. Um, yeah, maybe not. 
Oh, further investigation of that one, I reckon. All right, anyway, that's enough of that. There you go, that's uh, my tip. Always check, uh, if you're going to uh, keep your radio, you want to use it and get it back to maximum performance, um, yeah, you're going to have to do some TLC on these old radios. They weren't designed to last 40 years. Okay, hope you enjoy the video. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching 73s.